evening, Pawn in Our Chess Game. Tonight we're going to take a break from conveniently not knowing what a woman is to now very conveniently knowing exactly what a woman is to bring you tonight's top story. The Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. This takes away a woman's right to an abortion at a federal level and puts it in the hands of individual states to decide. What does this mean? How are people reacting? Why is this terrible? And how will this hurt future generations who will now unfortunately be alive to experience the future? Stay tuned for all those answers in tonight's special report, along with some other bullshit. Let's start off by seeing what the Babylon Bee had to say about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Dems pause January 6 hearings to call for an insurrection. Sounds like some accurate reporting to me. Less than pleased with the Supreme Court's decision to overturn abortion in Portland, rioters took to the streets to peacefully smash windows and write graffiti on walls. And also in other places too. As they were rioting because their right to abortion was taken away, no one told these Portland rioters that abortion is still legal in their state that they could go get one now instead of rioting if they want to. And on this issue, it's been reported that 100% of all rioters are alive and able to riot because their mothers didn't abort them. But if these people really stood for abortion, they would have been aborted so they could have first-hand experience going through what they're crusading for. Now, Legally speaking, many people are outraged over the overturning of Roe versus Wade because it takes away a constitutional right. But our legal research team shows that the other constitution that these people must be referring to is probably more important than the U.S. Constitution. And we look forward to eventually finding it one day so we can take a look. We have reports that when those who are outraged about the Supreme Court's ruling were asked, what is the actual legal basis that gives a birthing person the guaranteed right to abortion at a federal level? They expertly broke down the legal definitions to explain, I'm angry. Powerful legal precedent. Now with abortion, should it be a federal law or a state law? Let's break it down so you can be the judge. The legalization of abortion via Woe versus Raid or something like that came from the Supreme Court in 1973. Now the Supreme Court is not intended to make any laws as they did in the 1973 case for some reason nor are any of the Supreme Court justices elected representatives as Tucker Carlson points out. The Supreme Court is simple. It's to determine whether the laws that politicians pass are consistent with the United States Constitution. That's it. That's all the Supreme Court does. What the Supreme Court does not do, what it cannot do and should never do, is make laws. And it should never do that because a court making laws would be, by definition, anti-democratic. Now, getting to the heart of the matter, for communism to work, laws need to come from the federal level by unelected officials. In a filthy democracy, laws are passed by elected legislatures who are elected by citizens. So when laws come from the state level where people's elected representatives can actually represent them, that unfortunately strengthens democracy and interferes with the implementation of communism. So we'd like to thank all the writers out there for being tricked into fighting democracy by protesting the democratic tradition of them having the right to vote for their state elected representatives who will then either legalize abortion or not. Them allowing themselves to be used, whether they know it or not, to help usher in communism is inspiring and something their children and grandchildren could thank them for but probably won't for some reason. Now on this issue, we need you to know that abortion is good because it's not killing a baby because life doesn't begin until the moment of birth. And in other news, as DC Drano points out, if you kill a pregnant woman, you're charged with a double homicide because you've killed two lives. Head of the Canadian Communist Party, Justin Trudeau, is reaching out his demonic hands in a humanitarian effort. Ezra Levant, on the platform that Elon Musk kind of bought, but maybe isn't, but now kind of is again, 
points out, Justin Trudeau has invited American women who want an abortion to come to Canada. Bodily autonomy, he says. But they're not allowed to come unless they're first. Many leftists planned on protesting outside the home of black Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Definitely not because he's black. Protesting this black man is important because it's not okay to take away a constitutional right under any circumstance. Just ask our president. Recently, the now elected congresswoman from South Texas, Myra Flores, flipped a historically blue district red for the first time in 150 years. While she was being sworn into Congress, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi took a break from insider trading to elbow and push the congresswoman's young daughter. Take a look. Now, did white Nancy Pelosi do this because the congresswoman and her daughter are Hispanic? Well, that's a question we would only declare the answer to if it was against our political opposition. Instead, we'd like to point out that as Pelosi was inflicting mild violence onto a Hispanic child, she never once broke her smile that her surgeon implanted onto her face. In other news that'll make you feel like you're in good hands, as President Biden was speaking with reporters, he revealed a cheat sheet that instructs him on how to act. The cheat sheet had instructions on it like, you enter the Roosevelt Room, you take your seat, you ask Liz Schuler a question, you thank participants, you depart. Wait, who departs? Oh, I do. Hmm. Glad we could clarify this for my clearly working brain. And it was written repeatedly in all caps. Otherwise, I probably would have missed it. We expect the president's next cheat sheet to have the additional instructions on it for an even better public interfacing. You do not talk about your mandates when lecturing people about women's bodily autonomy. Only for today, you do know what a woman is. And you do not talk about showering with your daughter like she wrote about in her diary. Also, in another impressive public showing, the abortion-centric leftist president addressed the nation that definitely elected him about the Supreme Court's decision. Here's what he had to say. I, I do not view abortion as a, uh, um, as a choice and a right. I think it's always a tragedy. Uh, no, not that clip. Uh, try another one. Today, the Supreme Court of the United States expressly took away the constitutional right from the American people. Yeah, that's the one. In a strategic move of national leadership, he decided not to say anything with any substance. But we'd like to point out, with his eyes almost all the way closed, he was still very impressively able to read off the teleprompter, the reflection of which you can see on the doors behind him. Another cheat sheet of sorts. This enabled the president to precisely convey the message that he was instructed to give. In other news, a constitutional right that is super okay to take away is the right to bear arms. Because as President Biden has taught us, it is not okay to take away any constitutional right under any circumstance when it comes to abortion. But before he said that, he said the Second Amendment and the Constitution are not absolute. Congressman Chip Roy points out that tyrants disarm the people they intend to oppress. Take a look. Tyrants disarm the people they intend to oppress. Yeah, but that's not what we're doing here. Don't be silly. Let's move on. Ahead of her sentencing, Ghislaine Maxwell has been put on suicide watch. This is in spite of the fact that her attorneys insist she is not suicidal. Now, don't worry. The security cameras monitoring her cell are still working but won't be for long. And the leader in Arizona's gubernatorial race, Carrie Lake, had a beautiful and some would even say powerful interaction with a CNN reporter. Here it is. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. You, you, you don't have a mask on anymore. Uh, What's we're, going we're on? Outside. Do you have a wow. minute to well, chat? Well, we're six feet apart. <laughs> do you have a minute to chat? Um, I'll do an interview. Okay. As long as it airs on CNN Plus. Oh. Does that still exist? Yeah. I didn't think so, because the people don't like what you guys are peddling, so, which is propaganda. Thank you. you. If this is any indication of how she'll stand up against tyrants and propaganda once elected governor, 
then all we can say is, we gotta stop her. Like, you ruined our whole plan. That's it for tonight's news. In the coming months, please look for us on the left to use the Supreme Court's ruling to attract new voters to vote blue in the midterms. We think it's a foolproof plan because it'll attract people based on the virtues of killing babies and giving the federal government more power, which are both necessary for the greatest reset in history. Good night.